xin chào các độc giả của kênh Luxury Guy sống phải chất. Hôm nay chúng ta lại có cơ hội trò chuyện với một nhân vật rất đặc biệt trong làng siêu xe của thế giới. Chính xác hơn thì đây là một nhân vật chuyển từ mảng xe siêu sang sang phân khúc siêu xe. Đây là một người bạn cũ của tôi, ông Pro Harris từ giám đốc vùng của McLaren và bây giờ chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu buổi trò chuyện với Pro. Thanks Pro, thanks for spending time with Robert Ford Vietnam. So uh, basically You shifted from super luxury to supercar. So, what are the challenges? Are there any kind of advantages or disadvantages? You know, when shifting. Uh, well, I actually think it's sort of somewhere in the middle. Actually, I think that you know what I did before to where I am today, working for McLaren, is very much um, driven by my experiences. You know, doing other things, and I think there's a lot of similarity. Okay. And if I can try and explain that in simple terms, if you think about a typical client that we have. Generally speaking, they have a, they have many cars in their garage, so they might have five or six cars. Okay. They will normally always have a sports car, super sports car, ultimate series type of car. They will nearly always have some form of SUV. Mm -hmm. They will have a, an MPV, a sedan, and maybe one other sort of specialist or collectible car type of car. So for me, it was very, from a customer point of view, the transition was very sort of smooth. Okay. From a sort of an experience point of view, I think that there are many similarities, you know, including the way that we can bespoke sports cars within McLaren as well. So there's a lot of similarities between what I did before and what I do today. Okay, so good luck. So I see you know, there's it's a bit, it's huge you know, advantage for you when shifting from you know, Rolls Royce to McLaren. Okay. Uh, now, the question is the brand, I mean the McLaren, uh, made the first step in Vietnam by introducing the Artura here. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder why a hybrid, not you know, like an uh, internal combustion engine model? Uh, well, it is. I mean, the, the whole thing about Artura is, although it's hybrid, it's very much the hybridization of Artura behind us is very much driven by the fact that the hybridization of the car is really a, a way to enhance the performance of the car when it's combined with an ICE or an internal combustion engine. So we haven't abandoned that principle by any means. Uh, what we've done is we've enhanced that principle by adding electrification across the top of it. And remembering that from McLaren's point of view, that type of hybridization has been around for 10 years. Okay. So with the P1, it first came in in a slightly different way, um, but it still achieved the same thing, which was to effectively smooth the torque curves that occur in ICE performance. And that's really where Artura comes into its own, where it, you know, you've got Um, the ability for the car to completely smooth out some of those issues that occur, particularly in gear changes um, when you're driving in a, in, in a more, uh, shall we say, uh, aggressive way or extreme way. Okay. Actually, recently I just came back from Korea for a test drive with Ferrari. Uh, it's uh, 296 GTB. So, do you think there's any kind of competition, you know, among some brands, supercar brands in the market? I mean, um, I, I, I would say that, the, that, that there is space in the marketplace for everyone, you know, to have their own their own unique offering, mm -hmm. and I think that there are differentiations between them. And if, if I can just give you one, I mean, one of the key f uh, fundamentals of McLaren is is the, is the way that we design cars, and everything has a purpose and a lightweight purpose. So everything we do with McLaren has a specific purpose, and it's always engineered to be as lightweight as possible to maximize the power to weight ratio within within the car. And also technology-wise, if you look at it, you know, we have unique facets to a McLaren that don't exist anywhere else. For example, you know, the carbon tub technology that exists within the car that give it ultimate lightness and yet ultimate, you know, ultimate um, rigidity. Yeah. So I think that there are a number of differences uh, be between them. And the other thing as well is, is that, you know, is the engagement. I mean, we are highly engaged with our customers at, at many levels. And uh, we have a very you know, open uh, relationship that we build with our clients. And I think that that's very important as well. So, you know, the, the personalization side of it uh, in terms of not only the way you can personalize the cars, but the way that we deal with clients on a very, you know, face-to-face -face basis. So actually there's no, no real, I mean, no real competition at all? Uh, there's, all, I mean, I would, I would say that the, the more important facet of McLaren competition would be someone's time, what they invest in, where, they, where, they, where, where else they decide they're going to put their money. I think okay. beyond that, there are, of course, other cars because it's four, you know, four wheels. Whether or not that directly competes with McLaren or not, I don't think so. Okay, perfect. That's good. So, Paul, 
you assume the position with, you know, I mean, 11 countries now is 12 with Vietnam. So can you share with us some insight or observation regarding this new, newly opened market? Yeah, I actually think it's actually more than that. I think it's nearer 15 now, if we include, China, now. If we include China and the great, greater China influences. Wow. So it's quite a widespread, you know, mm. China all the way through to Japan, Korea, and then Indochina. I think it's, you know, it's, 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 it's vast. Uh, clearly, I can't cover all of that individually, so I have a very good support team, and we have organizational structures in China, in Japan, and, of course, in our Singapore offices as well. So we're able to sort of like cover the whole regions. Okay. I would say the insight I would give you is, is um, that probably our best uh, selling market is uh, Japan. Japan. And Japan is sort of like a sports car crazy. Yeah. And, uh, um, and, you know, it's probably the place where we've got our most opportunity as well. Yeah. Um, then clearly it's a, you know, a, a very, very big country like China. And considering that in China at the moment we only sell McLaren GT, we yeah. don't sell any other model lines at the moment, the Atura will come at the back end of the year into China. Yeah. And then it really is a question of, you know, a sort of a sliding scale thereafter. So Australia and New Zealand are very successful markets for us as well, with New Zealand particularly being the, you know, the homeland of Bruce McLaren. So there we've got a very high brand recognition you know, people understand the product, they understand, you know, the, the heritage of the product as well. Yeah. Remembering that McLaren is 60 years old as a brand, yeah. Yeah. and automotive side is only, you know, just coming up for its 10th year in terms, yes. of, in, in, yeah. in terms of, in terms of, you know, its, its age profile. Yeah. So, it, it's very exciting, and then there are a number of development pockets. Vietnam is a, a development pocket, there are other ones like Thailand is still, for us, expanding as well. Yeah. Uh, and there are others, you know, Indonesia is another one, for example, Malaysia is another one. Uh, India, we're just uh, just about to enter into as well. So there are many um, uh, opportunities that exist within the region as the region continues to grow and become what I call the powerhouse of the global economic boom. I mean, is there any kind of specific observation or insight regarding Vietnam? Yes, I think uh, Vietnam is probably for us uh, one of the uh, much, much more exciting markets to be in, in a way. One is the, there are some phenomenal, you know, uh, insights in this marketplace. One is is the consistent growth, so it grows at a very steady but very relatively speaking high pace. Yeah. It has done for years. A little bit of a hiccup during COVID, like everyone else, but then it seems to have come out the other side of that very positively as well. The other, of course, is the population and the population sort of like size and growth and age. Yeah. So it's a very young populace, which is very exciting for us. We, we consider ourselves to be a very young and engaging brand, mm -hmm. so the fit is sort of like perfect from that perspective. And the other is technology focus. So, you know, I would say that the Vietnamese are very, very into technology mm, okay. and under, understanding technology and want to, you know, experience technology in a usable form. And I think that Artura particularly for us is really the, you know, the, the, the absolute pinnacle of McLaren's capability in, in, in that combining hybridization, a new form of infotainment, a new, a new form of tech within the whole car and the way that the car operates within, within itself. The way that hybrid actually works where you've got on off hybrid where you can use it and not, or not use it and then the way it works in the normal driving modes where it's effectively torque smoothing throughout, mm. throughout the throughout the drive of the car yeah i do believe uh, because after such a long time with you know the market uh, you you see i mean not only you but some you know i mean car manager and car you know officers in in the region sees huge potential of vietnam but actually in recent year, I myself recognize that official dealers are really struggling with selling supercars in Vietnam because some kind of competition from you know unofficial dealers and salons. So, what is your point of view regarding this one? I think it's all about consistency and about having the right partner in the market. And I think that you know, with our recent appointment of SNS, we chose the best partner very carefully, and we believe that. Once we um, start operating officially and properly in the way that we are here today, for example, I think the consumer will have a confidence when they deal with us mm -hmm. as the official channel. And you know, we are the ones who can really serve them the best. So there is really no other reason to go to any other form of channel, I don't, I don't think. Um, so we will be able to build that relationship with those clients over time. And I just think as the, as the market grows, uh, as the population grows, and as our customer base grows, that that will, you know, permeate itself out into the into the Vietnamese marketplace, mm, okay. and we will be successful. So my last uh, question is, you know, uh, could you please uh, you know, drop us some hints regarding, you know, the next step of McLaren in, in Vietnam? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, firstly, I think is to get the business operational here uh, as quickly as possible. I mean, we've got a very strong team, a very good local partner. 
So I would encourage anyone who's not had the opportunity to see what's happening in Ho Chi Minh to come and have a look and see and have the experience that exists in the dealership. That's the first thing to say. Of course, we've got a tour about to arrive. Um, it, this is one of the very early cars to show, and we're very committed. This car hasn't been hardly anywhere in the region, so this is one of the first markets. So it's like a unique experience for the Vietnamese market. But that car will start to come towards the back end, back end of this year to be, on, to be seen on the road. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we've got product plans that I can't tell you about that are coming in the future. A very special, unique car that's being developed at the moment for the Vietnamese market only. Uh, with very, very, you know, strong Vietnamese connection in terms of what we're doing with that particular car. So we can tell you more about that a little bit later on, but that's not for now. So there will be special cars and, I mean, bespoke cars for, you know, Vietnamese market, right? There will be special cars, yes. Uh, my last question is, are there some orders for McLaren in, in Vietnam already? Oh, yes, always. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. How many? Uh, well, you know, we don't need to talk about numbers, but okay. all, all I would say is it's beyond our expectations. Come on, that's good. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Cheers. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Okay. Yeah.